A mighty fortress is our God, our stronghold and protection. He is our hope, our friend, our guide, the giver of salvation. What if the nations rage and surging seas rampage? What though the mountains fall, the Lord is God of all. His love endures forever. The waters of His goodness flow throughout His holy city. And gladden hearts of those who know his tenderness and pity. Though nations stand unsure, God's kingdom shall endure. His power shall remain. His peace shall ever reign. Our God is always In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We begin our celebration of these sacred mysteries by acknowledging our need for the Lord's mercy, His generous forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We Lord give God, Heavenly God, King, O oh God, God Almighty God. Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten God. Son. Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son, Son of the of Father, God. you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You, you take, take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone, the Holy One, you alone, the Lord, you alone, the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Commandment says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began his accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, 
they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> when St. John Paul II visited the United States in September of 1987 and celebrated Mass in New Orleans, the readings for that Sunday were the ones we have heard today. And in his homily, St. John Paul II said, Merciful love forms the essence of the gospel and Christianity. Merciful love is the basis of the Lord's answer to Peter's question about how many times to forgive others. In the symbolic language of the Bible, 70 times seven times means that we must be able to forgive everyone every time. Surely this is one of the most difficult and radical demands of the gospel. Yet how much suffering and anguish, how much futility, destruction, and violence would be avoided if only we put into practice in all our human relationships the Lord's answer to Peter. Thus said St. John Paul II. In Jesus' parable, the servant begs the king for mercy and receives it. But when a fellow servant begs him for mercy, he grabs him by the throat, demanding, pay back what you owe, and he has him thrown into prison. To bring home a lesson forcefully, Jesus often used exaggeration, a common Semitic practice. In our gospel translation, it says that the unforgiving servant owed the king a huge amount. But the early manuscripts of the gospels in the original are more specific. They say that he owed 10,000 talents, the equivalent of 150 years wages or $60 million. The servant himself was owed 100 denarii, which was about three months wages, less than $200. So by exaggerating the differences between the two amounts, Jesus teaches the absurdity and the injustice of our refusing to forgive others when we ourselves have been forgiven repeatedly by our God. So this parable challenges us to be just as forgiving towards others as God has been to us. It underscores what Jesus told his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you yours. Every time we pray the Our Father, we pray, forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Our God is merciful. As we prayed in the psalm today, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all our iniquities. He crowns us with kindness and compassion. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he punish us according to our crimes. We can always rely on this. God will always forgive us. There is no sin so big, so grievous, that God refuses to forgive it. At the beginning of Mass, we beg the Lord for forgiveness by saying, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. You will never hear the priest say, sorry, the Lord has run out of mercy. And when you go to confession, you will never hear the priest say, sorry, you did that one too many times. 
God has run out of patience, go away. At least I hope you would ever hear that. No, God's mercy and his patience is never depleted. It never runs out. We should be so grateful for God's loving mercy and forgiveness. And Jesus tells us to show our gratitude by trying to be like God, imitating his great compassion towards us by being compassionate and merciful towards others. But we know that it can be incredibly difficult to forgive someone who has deeply hurt us. And we have to make a distinction between forgiveness and reconciliation. Reconciliation requires a mutual effort. Both parties must desire reconciliation. Sometimes it's just impossible and not even wise. So forgiveness doesn't require that we be reconciled. Forgiveness can be a unilateral act. I can forgive someone even if they have no desire to be reconciled, even if they show no remorse and don't even ask for forgiveness. Forgiving someone doesn't mean the, I think the offender deserves to be forgiven. In fact, we might know that he or she would offend again if given the opportunity. And forgiving someone doesn't mean I must give up on any pursuit of justice that might be required. Sometimes the police might have to be called or a lawyer. Forgiving someone doesn't mean that we can't take steps to protect ourselves from someone who would do us harm. It doesn't mean that we must put up with abusive treatment. But it does mean that I have to give up my need for revenge. I give up my hate. I give up any desire to see the offender suffer as much as I have suffered. I give up on the urge to get even. We reject the slogan, don't get mad, get even. In the first reading from Sirach today, we heard, the vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Can anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? It's in our best interest to do our best to forgive those who have hurt us. Brooding over injuries can destroy us. Remaining obsessed over past hurts destroys our peace of mind, our happiness. So maybe the first step in being able to forgive someone is to ask God for his healing of ourselves, to get over it, to move on, to live in the present, not the past. It's not always easy though. Emotional injuries can be like physical injuries. It takes time for healing to happen. God knows it's not always easy and he always remains merciful. God knows that maybe the best thing we can do is to pray for that person, to ask God's mercy upon him or her, and to guide and heal the one who has hurt us. And that is genuine forgiveness. It's not so much about what we feel, but what we do. And if we can pray for the well-being of a person who has hurt us, that's quite a lot. Finally, years ago, I spoke with a woman who was told by her counselor that she must confront and express anger towards her father, who was an alcoholic and had always created chaos and disharmony in the family. She suffered greatly as a child and still felt some resentment toward her father. The counselor's advice was, you must confront your father and let him know that he hurt you. He hurt you, and now you must hurt him. But the woman said, but I really love my father, and I don't want to hurt him in his old age. She refused to return evil for evil. And that is genuine forgiveness. 
That is genuine love. And where there is love, there is God. Peace be with you. Thanks be to God. Let us profess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we turn to our Father with confidence and place before him all of our needs and concerns, all of our special prayers. that we may have wisdom to forgive others as we seek the Lord's forgiveness for ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire everyone who is working to curtail and eradicate the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in the aftermath of the explosion in Beirut, and the hurricane in Louisiana, that we will do what we can to assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's consolation of the victims of the wildfires in the western United States, and for the safety and success of firefighters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's protection of us and our neighbors against storms and hurricanes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who have asked for our prayers, that God's blessing may come upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal happiness of all of our deceased loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will hear and answer the personal prayers we now mention in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you know what we need even before we ask you. In your goodness, give us every good thing we need to love you and serve you in our lives. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we profess his resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await his coming and glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Father, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Father, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray to our Heavenly Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Father, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take you away take the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Come, live in the light. Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord. We are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Come, open your heart. Show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless, so all hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Sing, sing a new song. Sing of that great day when all will be one. God will reign and we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God.